Hey friends, Mike Carlin Speak Realty here. So we are in the midst of a super strong seller's market. So I am going to give you some tips on things that you can do to help make your offer stronger besides just throwing a whole bunch of money at it, though that certainly can help. And these tips will work in any market, but especially now where it seems like every home has multiple offers on it, you need to do something to make your offer stand out above the crowd. So what are the things that a buyer's agent should be doing um, to help their buyer get the offer accepted when they find that house that they absolutely love and you know you're going to be competing against you know anywhere from three to sometimes it's 20 some people making offers on these houses sometimes even more I've heard some crazy numbers in other areas well step one is conversation the buyer's agent needs to speak to the uh, listing agent and basically interview them find out what the seller wants because obviously people want as much money as they can net on the property though that isn't always the the most important thing there are certain terms that you can put in there that will uh, outweigh just them netting the most amount of money so but given obviously people want to make as much money as they can but what other things are important to the seller is uh, are they transitioning looking to upgrade in the area are they buying another house in the area that they haven't found yet and they have to sell this house first well maybe doing something like a rent back allowing them to um, stay in the house after you close for a certain period of time whether it's a week or two um, maybe a month or two just depending your flexibility and what they're looking for um, what else might be important to the seller maybe they want a quick closing maybe the quicker the closing the better for the seller because they already know where they're going to go so the only way you're going to find this out is to speak to the sellers uh, to the listing agent and just basically interview them find out what a strong offer will look like to the seller and what ultimately um, besides just the bottom line price what's going to motivate them to choose your offer over the other offers uh, another thing to consider is paying the seller's closing costs um, so obviously that's you have to have the funds to be able to do that but sometimes just those there's little things we can do which may not even change the bottom line that much for the seller but will feel stronger to the seller so such as paying their closing costs right rather than raising the price on the house um, because they, you know, again it just may feel better to the seller and, and, and the seller can see okay well if they're paying for everything then I know now exactly what my bottom line price is going to be and that way they can move on informed and may give them a feeling of confidence uh, another thing that you can do is a higher deposit down um, around here it's called earnest money deposit again it gives that feeling of security to the seller when they see that you've got more money to put down even though the money is going to be used either way towards your closing costs if you can put that higher amount into the deal up at first it just shows the seller that you're more serious again it's more of an emotional thing it really doesn't change what you're paying for the house in any way shape or form it doesn't change what the seller is going to net on the house just feel stronger to the sellers uh, the um, now when it comes to the price so obviously you're, you're if you're going to bid up the house and you may have to bid up the house depending how many other offers are on the house that goes back to the communication where you're talking to the as the buyer's agent you're talking to the listing agent so you can find out how many offers are there what's our competition looking like just trying to get as much information as you can so one method though of putting in a really high offer without being worried that you're just putting in an offer way above everybody else and you end up spending extra money you don't have to is an escalation addendum the escalation addendums work similar to if you've ever bid it on something on ebay where you say okay I'm willing to pay up to this amount but I'm only going to pay increased amounts if somebody else is also bidding so um, quick example let's say you are looking at a house that is 400,000 you're willing to pay up to 500 for it though 
Um, but yeah, obviously, you don't want to spend 500 if the next person is a bidding 425 or 450 on it. So you put in an escalation addendum saying that you will beat any competing offer by X amount of dollars up to X amount of price. So in this instance, you would be willing to go up to 500, but only based on other offers. So you will beat any other offer by whatever you feel is a reasonable price and it needs to be something to motivate. I've seen people who have done escalation addendums with $500 increments and $500 in a you know hundreds of thousands of dollars transaction is not enough to motivate the seller to really make a different decision. So generally I recommend 2,000, 5,000 might even be a better number especially if you're in the four to 500 range. Um, so again, that's it allows you to put in that really high price without having to be worried about actually having to pay an insane amount over other people. Um, now the next thing you can do is offer to pay above the price value because in this escalating prices that we are seeing, a lot of times the appraisers are not can't find the comps or can't prove the value of the house even though you know many of these houses six months later it's a no-brainer but in the moment we don't you know we can't prove that house has that value. Uh, so offering to pay either X amount of dollars over the appraisal or just pay the sale price irregardless of the appraisal. Again, will help the seller feel more confident in accepting your offer because you know that's always their worry that what happens if you offer 500 for this $400,000 house that comes in at 400 for the appraisal and then the, you know at that point as the buyer you can say well I'm, I'm only paying the appraised value and then basically the seller is you know stuck at that original price point with the when they had all these other offers uh, now um, one thing that I we see a lot in this market which I would not recommend to my clients but I also would allow them to make their own decision on that uh, it just makes me a little nervous is waiving the home inspection um, we are seeing and, and I've done deals with this both sides and I can tell you from the seller's perspective it's uh, just feels a lot better. Uh, the last one I did, we had several offers that all came in right around the same price, but one of them waived that home inspection. Um, and there was another one that was, at home, I mean, basically exactly the same offer, but with a home inspection. And by waiving that home inspection, the seller could say, well, okay, well now I know this is a done deal. They're not gonna come back and ask us for stuff. Um, even with the home inspections where they say it's for information only, it still gives the buyer that opportunity to turn around and walk away and get their earnest money back. So by waiving the home inspection, it really presents a much stronger, more secure offer for the seller now, of course, the downside is sometimes there's hidden issues with houses. Now, I would say I cannot really think of any home inspections that I've done that ended up being a big deal breaker. Usually we either negotiated some repairs or the buyer was like, okay, now I'm informed what the issues are and I'm, they're not that big an issue to me. I can address it later. Um, but this is a major purchase, so it is really scary if there's some kind of hidden damage that isn't discovered and you had waived that home inspection, you know, it could become a big issue. So I would use that, uh, that tool with caution. Um, and then the, the final thing that kind of, uh, you know, helps everything and really makes for a super strong offer is of course cash. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, a, in most cases that may not be feasible, but if there were some way to get the cash in hand, uh, for instance, if you couldn't you know, borrow from friends and family and then refinance and pay the house back, like pay it back later, uh, or if you could somehow, if you have other property, you could take out equity lines on something like that. And that again, gives the seller that, that warm fuzzy feeling because they know the deal is gonna close when they see that the person has the money so they don't have to worry about the appraisal or the bank or any other things coming up because you know a cash deal is pretty much a done deal unless the person just changes their mind. So hopefully I gave you some good tips today that you could use uh, when you want to really you, you found that house or your buyer has found that house and you really want to put your best foot forward to give yourself the best chance of possibly getting that deal done. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Uh, please go ahead and hit that bell, hit the like and subscribe button so when new videos come out, you'll get notified immediately.